Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this question, we have been given the sequential circuit, and as you can see, the sequential circuit consists of two D flip flops. And here we have been also given the initial states of these two flip flops. So in this sequential circuit, the clock frequency is equal to one megahertz. And here we have been asked to find the output frequency at the Q2. And to find that, first of all, let us see. How the output states of the given sequential circuit changes with the every clock pulse. So here we have been already given the initial states of the two flip flops. That means here initially this Q2 is equal to zero, while the Q1 is equal to one. So as you can see, this Q2 is directly connected to the D1 flip flop, while the Q1 bar of the first flip flop is connected to the D2 input. That means here this D2 is equal to Q1 bar. While the D1 is equal to Q2, and according to these two inputs, the output of the flip flop will change in the next clock pulse. So based on the initial states, now let us see how the output of the sequential circuit will change. So here, since the D2 is equal to Q1 bar, so for the next clock pulse, this D2 input will be equal to zero. And similarly, since D1 is equal to Q2, so for the next clock pulse, this D1 will be equal to zero. So these two will be the inputs for the next clock pulse, and as you know, for the D flip flop, the output is same as the input. That means at the next clock pulse, if we see this Q2 plus and the Q1 plus, then both will be equal to zero. So now this will be the present state of the two flip flops. That means now in this row we will have zero zero. So once again, since the D2 is equal to Q1 bar, so now this D2 will become one. And since the D1 is equal to Q2, so in this column we will have zero. That means now the inputs for the two flip flops are one and zero. And therefore, at the next clock pulse, the Q2 and Q1 will be equal to one and zero. That means once again, these two will be the present state of the two flip flops. So here, since the Q1 is equal to zero, so in this column we will have one input. And this D1 is same as the Q2. That means in this column we will have one. So now for the next clock pulse, the inputs to the flip flop are one one, and therefore at the next clock pulse, the output of the two flip flops will also be equal to one one. So now this will be the present state of the two flip flops. So once again, since the Q one is equal to one, so this D two will become zero, and this D one is same as the Q two. That means in this column we will have one. So now. For the next clock pulse, the inputs for the two flip flops are zero and one, and therefore its output will be also equal to zero one. So once again, this will be the present input for the two flip flops, that is zero and one. And once again, as you can see over here, the inputs for the two flip flops will be equal to zero zero, and accordingly, the outputs of the two flip flop will also be equal to zero zero in the next state. So from this table, as you can see. The output states of the flip flops are repeating after the four clock cycles. So suppose if you take this zero zero state of the flip flop, then it is repeating after the four clock cycles. Or if we see the output waveform of this Q two, then for the two clock cycles, the output remains one, while for the next two clock cycles, it is remaining zero. And then after once again, it will become one. That means if we see the output waveform of the Q two, then it will look like this. So suppose if you observe the waveform of the Q2 at some reference point T1, then for the two clock pulses, the output will remain one, while for the next two clock pulses, it will remain zero, and then after once again it will become one. So in this way, as you can see, this Q2 waveform is repeating itself after the four clock cycles, or we can say that compared to the clock pulse, its time duration is equal to 40, or in other words, in the frequency, we can say that. The frequency of this Q2 output is equal to f clock divided by four. So here the clock frequency is equal to one megahertz. That means if we see the frequency at the output Q2, then that will be equal to 250 kilohertz. So from this we can say that the frequency of the signal at this Q2 output is equal to 250 kilohertz.